Oh, all right. All right, we had sea anemones. Uh, growth and development on this thing, the major idea of it is the more food, the faster it grows, and the more it grows. So you feed this thing a lot, and it'll grow faster, and it'll grow bigger. Um, the reproduction, it's a very simple, uh, it's a very simple process. The adults release their uh, in, release their eggs embedded in a gelatinous mucous mass or a free sp swimming sperm. And the function of this uh, gelatinous mass is not only protection, but locomotion and organization. It keeps all the uh, cells together and easy for the uh, receiver to receive it. And fertilization occurs when the gametes of both sexes are combined in vitro. That pretty much means that when they are combined, uh, you get little tiny baby sea anemones. Uh, many sea anemones are hermaphroditic. They can reproduce sexually or asexually, kind of like the uh, sponge. Individual anemones may become reproductively mature as soon as 69 days. It doesn't sound very mature. Uh, embryos, gastrulate, uh, this means uh, early embryonic development uh, within 12 to 15 hours of birth. Ciliated planulae emerge from egg masses 36 to 48 hours later and uh, after fertilization. Day seven, four tentacle buds are uh, developed about 250 to 500 millimeters long and uh, micronemories present at two to three weeks. The location of these sea anemones are found throughout the world's oceans and uh, they're found in all of the world's oceans. They live in a variety of temperatures and depths. Uh, they mostly reside in tide pools and intertidal muscle beds. Muscle beds serve as a juvenile habitat or a refuge for the sea anemone. As you can see right here in a low tide pool, they're kind of a greenish color, but up high they're more brown. And then these ones are more green, so they're in a low tide pool. Mainly fa these uh, sea anemones are mo ma mainly found in coastal waters that are considered to be uh, tropical, although most are found in shallow tropical waters. Some can live at depths more than 10,000 meters uh, below sea level. Most inhabit tropical reefs. There are some adapted to cold water, intertidal reefs, and sand slash kelp environments. Okay, the sea anemones are, um, are not endangered and climate change and human activity affect their population, but there is over 1,000 different types of species of them and this chart um, the blue shows how many, are pre pre how, many, uh, how many there are today, the orange shows how many will be in 2025, and the yellow shows how many will be in 2050. Um, threats on them, extreme temperature changes, prolonged darkness, and heavy metals in the water equal higher mortality rate. Um, they are affected by human activities, stuff like reclamation and pollution. Um, they, get trampled, if you, they get trampled by tourists, and overcollection can be another result, and the aquarium trade is one of the biggest reasons or threats, which that's what the aquarium trade looks like. Yeah. All right, so the medical importance. Um, sea anemones uh, use venomous stinging tentacles to stun their prey, and this venom is actually being used to treat MS or multiple sclerosis. The venom is actually called SHK, and it blocks the KV13 potassium channels located in T cells, and the T cells are your white blood cells. And the T cells produce nerve damage, which causes MS. Uh, potassium channels control all sorts of key functions in the human body, and with the SHK, the unwanted side effects are minimized. Um, KV13 potassium channel is only found on T cells and in the nose. KV13 regulates the heart rate, insulin secretion, smooth muscle contraction, and cell volume. Professor, Professor Norton of Monash Institution of Pharmaceutical Sciences said that 
by blocking potassium channels, the SHK prevented T cells from attacking the nerves, nervous system and paralyze, or yeah, the paralyzing that is observed in MS patients. And SHK186 is extremely responsive and successful in humans. Some therapy examples. Um, it's most commonly known to be used in venom therapy, which is a way to minimize the effects and symptoms of debilitating diseases. It's tested through animal testing, sadly. Um, it's still in the trial stages, but the first stages are soon to be coming up in the Netherlands. There's three pages of it there. That's it?